Hey everyone, thank you for watching. Today's video I'm really excited to do. I'm gonna be talking about products that I received in PR that I would not spend my own money on. I've done a couple of these in the past. I'm excited to do an updated one. I'll have some of my past videos linked down below. These were started by uh, Kaylee Bate, kind of came up with this original idea of uh, products that she wouldn't and would spend her, her money on that she did receive in PR. So I will also link her down below. But I'm also really excited for today's video because it is going to be a collab. And I'm collabing with Hannah Louise Poston. If you guys have not checked out Hannah's channel yet, I definitely recommend that you do. I actually mentioned her a couple months back in my creator spotlight portion that I do every month in my makeup monthly video. Uh, and I know a lot of you said you were either subscribed to her already or you were heading over to her channel and you really enjoyed her content. So that made me so excited. I think that her channel is kind of a little bit more unique maybe for the YouTube space. She covers some topics that I don't see a lot of people do. She actually did a no buy year and she really took us through that time, her thought process uh, when she was on this year long no buy and now she has her beauty budget year for 2019 and she talks, you know, we got to see the first time that she went shopping after her no buy, what she was picking up, how that no buy kind of changed her her view on shopping and buying makeup and, and skincare and beauty items. And she just has some really good topics over there. Um, you know, she does reviews and, and, and some hauls as well, but uh, I, I just really, really enjoy her channel. I tend to leave her videos always thinking about something. Uh, thinking about the topic that she was talking about thinking how you know if I was filming that video like what what would my experience be what would I be saying and I just really enjoy that in the same way when I read a book I love to to leave a book thinking about you know some of the lessons that were inside there and I feel like I get that from so many of her YouTube videos so if you haven't checked her out yet I highly recommend that you do um, like I've said in the past I just enjoy her demeanor so much she has a fabulous vocabulary which I quite enjoy she's a writer herself uh, and I just think that she's a really fun channel so definitely make sure to check out Hannah's channel. I'm excited to see her video as well and what products that she is going to spotlight. Uh, but like I said, these are going to be about uh, products that I've received in PR that I wouldn't pay with my own money. Um, maybe uh, these products just don't work for me or maybe I like some of these products just fine but if I use them up or something like that, I wouldn't go out and repurchase them. We're also going to be doing, I think this is going to happen next week, but don't quote me for sure. I'm pre-filming a little bit here as I prepare for a visit from my mom. Uh, but we're also going to do the flip side and we're going to talk about PR products we've received that we would spend with our own money. So we'll be collabing once again, which I'm really looking forward to. But if you'd like to see about the products I received in PR that I would not purchase with my own money, why don't we go ahead and get started. Alrighty, sometimes these videos, I remember doing them in the past, they can be kind of a tricky thing because some people just don't really want to hear anything about PR and um, I definitely understand that. I actually don't do um, like PR hauls on my channel. I will show some things on my Instagram stories and it's really nice to be able to take the brands and say thank you. Uh, but um, you know, receiving PR is definitely a part of my job. It's how I can get some videos out there quicker with reviews quicker. And um, you know, one thing that never really has made sense to me because I've, I've legitimately gotten these comments of I should be spending my own money on every single new release <laughs> and I'm just like that doesn't even make sense no one would even want to do that like it's fun to try out makeup it's fun to test out makeup but there are so many times where I receive emails from a brand saying we have this coming out would you like to review it and I say no thank you because you just can't do it all um, so I, I know that it can be a little bit of a tricky subject but I hope that you enjoy you know both of our videos and I think that it's it's a fun topic so this was a while back when when Kaylee was uh, first coming out these videos but I just thought it was a really interesting topic and everybody is so different so it was fun when other creators started making the style of video so definitely recommend if you guys want to do this one and you have a YouTube channel it's fun so first up I want to talk about this palette from Charlotte Tilbury so this is the supersonic girl luxury palette of pops so we have have this little guy here so it's a nice nice little compact here you have a nice mirror you have these four different shades inside but this is $53 and I this is just one that I'm like ah why are you $53 um, the shades inside are are very pretty you know I like the colors in here but they just aren't the most like overwhelming eyeshadows I've ever tried in my life and to pay $53 for four shades I'm like I simply do not understand I got such a generous PR package from Charlotte Tilbury 
I did a video with a bunch of the products and I was so excited about that because Charlotte definitely has some pretty pricey products out there and there's products that I have found um, either purchasing myself or getting in PR from her that I'm like, oh my gosh, I love this. I would recommend so much. I would spend my own money on this. But there's also some products that I've tried out that I'm like, you know what? Like, unless you're a really big high-end lover, I probably wouldn't be able to recommend this for the price. And that's the case with this one. I've seen some people really enjoy these palettes. I know she has one in Pillow Talk that people really enjoy and I've seen some other complimentary reviews on this one but I just don't see the hype and for the $53 it just doesn't make me want to run out and purchase any more of these or you know if for some reason I was like paying on this entire palette like I wouldn't go like pick it up again or something like that but um uh, that's the first one there from Charlotte Tilbury. Next up I have a product from Milk Makeup. So this is one of their lip colors. So Milk Makeup, um, the reason why I thought that I would mention this one particularly in this video is because they came out with lip colors a while back, a couple years back. I received them in PR and I enjoyed that formula so much. It was creamy, but it looked mad on the lips. It was super long wearing, didn't really budge, and I was so happy with them. They came out with new packaging, but also a new formula. I was so bummed about that because I was ready to actually purchase this. So my favorite shade in the, in the old formula was cream. It was like this really light pinky nude. It was so beautiful. So stunning. So when I saw that they were coming out with new ones, I was like, I'm going to buy cream because I'm going to see if it's the same formula. If it is, I'm going to be so excited because I've had that other one for quite some time. Um, you know, like maybe I could could do a little upgrade. You know, I really like this new packaging. Like it's super chic and it's kind of like the magnetic here and you have the name on the side. Like how fun is this? So I was planning to repurchase that myself. I put it on my loves list. Like I was ready to go. I was going to buy it and test it out. And then I actually ended up getting a PR package from Milk Makeup and it had um, I think maybe like five of these new lipsticks and I was like oh my gosh this is so exciting like this is fantastic I was totally going to try these out on my own and while they didn't send me cream I was able to tell right away from this formula that it's very different from the original one and that's what made me not go on to purchase cream because even if they would have sent me some of these and I would have been like this is the same formula just better packaging oh my gosh I'm so excited I still would have gone out and purchased cream on my own but because it's such a different formula and it's different in ways that I don't prefer. I did not go on to purchase cream and I'm just going to use my original lip color until I can't use it anymore. Uh, but the reason why I don't enjoy these as much is because um, it's more of a creamy formula versus a matte formula like the prior one. There's still like a hint of matte in here, but it's just almost really creamy and almost gets a little bit slippery on my lips. I get a bunch of transfer with these. I did mention this uh, particular shade in Skills in a recent video that I did, um, just uh, 23 nude lipsticks and I will link that video down below because I did mention this one and I, I particularly wanted to put this uh, lipstick in that video because this formula reminds me a little bit of the Jaclyn Cosmetics lipsticks and the point of that video uh, the original point of that video was to dupe the six that I purchased we all know that there was drama there so instead I changed it to just 23 nude lipsticks from the fairest in my collection to some of the darker ones in my collection and kind of everything in between and even though this isn't necessarily a favorite formula of mine. I still wanted to mention it for that video because it seemed a little bit more similar to the Jaclyn Cosmetics, again, because it's so creamy um, and just really, it's just so easy to apply to the lips, which I enjoy. I like when lipsticks go on creamy, but then I want them to be a little bit more matte. I want them to really stay put. Um, you know, I definitely understand that there's going to be transfer, especially with bullet lipsticks, but this was just like getting everywhere and that part I didn't love. So unfortunately, like, I, I like this product. I like this color and skills. It's a nice nude with a little bit of peach to it. Like I, I like the shade and everything and I'll wear this, you know, a, a few times and all of that, which is great, but I wouldn't go out and repurchase this new formula, which has me so bummed because I was fully prepared to do so. <laughs> Next up, I have a product here from Benefit Cosmetics. So one uh, category that I really enjoy from Benefit is their brows. I have the Precisely My Brow in my brows today. I really enjoyed their Goof Proof. Uh, I used to use their Gimme Brow all the time before I really started like actually doing my brows on a regular basis. But one product that I just Mm, can't get down with is this brow contour pro I actually decluttered this I think it was in my most recent moving makeup declutter but I still have my box here with me because I let some girlfriends go through it I let family members go through it and then I decide if I can 
you know, donate items or send them somewhere else. So it's still sitting in the box because no one has claimed this as of so far. And I'm like, I'm really not shocked because first of all, it just looks kind of intimidating. You know, it's a very large brow product. So kind of right off the bat, it's like kind of like, huh? And then you have these different uh, shades that you can click down and then that corresponding shade will come out here. So this one, uh, I have blonde light is what I was set. So there's a lighter shade, a deeper shade, a definer, and a highlighter shade. And you can kind of like go back and forth and just really create like this perfect brow. But this product just did not work for me. Now I've repurchased Precisely My Brow. I've repurchased Goof Proof. Again, some of my favorite brow pencils. This is one that I just didn't even really want to keep in my collection. You do have to twist it. So once you push a certain shade down, you twist it. But then once you twist it, you can't twist it back. And that is just like a pet peeve of mine on brow pencils. I don't like it. I feel like it's it just drives me crazy when I can't do that. But also at the same time, it's such a thick product that I just don't even like holding it to do my brows. I like something that's a lot more slim and this is just not it. But I also didn't feel like I needed all the different shades. Like I get it and I get why and I get some people want to do that and I do do that, but I just don't. I also don't like clean up my brows with like the define shade or something like that. Like sometimes I'll highlight my brow bone, but I like to use a shadow, not the... There was just a lot going on with this. So, I, you know, it was fun to try out. It was fun to test out. I tried it out for the first time for a video, but uh, this is definitely not one that I would purchase with my own money. So next up I have an eyeshadow palette from ColourPop. Now I really enjoy the ColourPop pressed eyeshadow palettes. They're some of my favorite. I've purchased many of them on my own. Uh, I do get a few items sent to me in PR from ColourPop, which is super exciting. That's happened fairly recently and it's been really, really cool to kind of get their attention. They send me a few things every once in a while uh, and it's really fun to be able to try them out. Recently, they sent along the Misunderstood eyeshadow palette. This is from the Villains collection that they did uh, with Disney. So they came out with Disney princesses and then they came out with the Disney villains. And this eyeshadow palette, like it's pretty, but I knew even when it came out and I first put it in a Willoughby video that I was like, you know, I just don't think that I would purchase that. The colors inside are nice, but they don't like super appeal to me. Uh, so when I got it, I was like, you know what? This is cool. This is fun. Um, you know, I shared it on my Instagram stories and a lot of people said you wanted to see a look with it. So I do have an Instagram tutorial using this palette. And I liked the look that I came up with. The main focus was on Underworld, which is a beautiful bronze. I also put the Fates as a lower lash line shade. So um, I really like blue sometimes as like my pop of color for my lower lash line because it was still kind of more of a neutral look with the bronze eye. But then when you add a little bit of blue as like the pop of color, it just kind of like gives it an edge, if you will. So I liked it and I've used a couple more shades out of here, but I don't really feel like inspired to reach for this palette. There's not a lot of mattes compared to how many shimmers are in here. And then some of the shimmers in here, like maybe I have some of them or maybe there are shades that I just don't reach for a lot. So even though I really do like the ColourPop pressed eyeshadow palettes, I've recommended so many on my channel. The Misunderstood was just one that I was like, yeah, okay. Like I, I just want to spend my own money on this palette. That's just personal preference. I'm sure there's a lot of people who enjoy their misunderstood palette. So next up I have a mascara that I have talked about in the past that is just not a favorite of mine that it seems like everybody else loves. That is from Lancome. That's the Monsieur Big Mascara. Um, this one that I have here is the waterproof, but I did also get sent the regular version as well. I just used it up in one of my uh, Shop My Stash. I think it was from last month. I had it in my Shop My Stash bag, so I decluttered it at the end. I did say that when I was filming my reviews for my Shop My Stash, so when I do Shop My Stash, I'll always come back and not only show the new products that I'm putting into my bag, but I will review the products that I was using the prior month, uh, maybe declutter some that I didn't love or I used up or they were old or whatnot. And I mentioned in there that throughout the month that I was trying the mascara, I actually liked it more than I remembered trying it because when I first started using it, I was like, I do not understand the hype. Like I was so excited when I got this package from Lancome and the Monster Big Mascara was in there because I was like, everybody raves about this. Like it's gonna be my new favorite too. And I used it and I was like, what is everyone seeing that I am not seeing? I was super confused. I'll say throughout the month, like I said, you know, I, I liked it a little bit more than I remembered, but I still got so much transfer on my under eyes. Like if I wore this for several hours, I had so much black on my under eyes. And while I felt like it did nice things for 
a little bit of lengthening, a little bit of volume. It just wasn't anything that I was like, oh my gosh, this is so great. And especially to spend, you know, the, the price tag for a high-end mascara. I was like, you know, I wouldn't go out and repurchase this. And like I said, I did use up that regular version and I have zero plans to go on to repurchase another one because I just didn't see the hype. I felt like it got a little bit better maybe as it dried out a little bit. It was still a pretty wet formula, but still, especially because the amount of transfer I got and that I just didn't think it did anything so great for my lashes. I would not spend my own money on the Monsieur Big Mascara from Lancome. So next up, I have a couple different products to talk about from Too Faced. These were both a part of the Pretty Rich collection. So first up, I have the Diamond Fire Highlight. And first of all, like I just don't really like this packaging, this box. It's very bulky. The actual highlight is still like very, very bulky. But I was really excited when I got this collection PR because I was actually eyeing some of this collection myself. So when I got it, I was like, I'm so excited. I did a video with it right away. And I just thought being a part of the Pretty Rich collection and it's in this like glitzy packaging like there's so much going on I was like this is gonna be a bomb highlight and unfortunately it was more like the highlight bombed for me uh, I just really didn't get anything out of this highlight I was trying so hard and trying so hard and building it up and I was like what is going on like why why am I not enjoying this highlight why am I not seeing this highlight I guess if you like you know a more natural highlight it could be a good option but I guess for me I would rather spend a little bit less money on natural highlights because that's not my preference so um if i'm going to be buying one i i tend to do like more affordable highlights or a drugstore highlight or something like that and i'm more willing to spend a higher price point on highlights that are very blinding and beautiful and that i love so much uh so unfortunately the highlight was just like not great i didn't really recommend it and then for the pretty rich palette I think that it's a fine eyeshadow palette. This was the one that I was really eyeing when this collection was coming out, and I was kind of considering it, like, kind of considering it, like, should I do it? Uh, but it ended up being just okay. You do have the four pressed glitters in here that they're a little bit hard to work with, and you do have some nice mattes and some shimmers, but overall, it just kind of ended up being more of a letdown for me, and I was pretty bummed about that because I, I thought that I would really like this palette i don't know I, I thought that i would like it i thought that we would get on more and like i said when it first came out i was so intrigued by the pictures of it again we do still have like the bulkier packaging on here but i was like i can look past that you know and i'm glad that i didn't spend my money on it because i probably would have been pretty disappointed even the mirror like we have just like this tiny mirror for this for this big old like that like i get it it looks like a vanity mirror that's so cute but still i was like oh it just it really did fall flat for me and I just thought I would mention it because this was one that I was really considering picking up for myself and after getting it in PR I was glad that I didn't. Next up I have a product here from Buxom. So I I appreciate Buxom so much. They send out so many generous PR packages which is so kind and I, I really do like a lot of Buxom products. I've actually repurchased the white Russian lip gloss. I know a bunch of my girlfriends really love them. Um, so a bunch of my girlfriends are also really grateful <laughs> for Buxom's <laughs> generous PR packages and uh, you know it's so nice and I really enjoy trying new products I just reviewed one of their new uh, lip products the cereal lip kisser in last month's makeup monthly and I quite enjoyed that but one product that I've tried that again like I think is fine but I definitely wouldn't go out and repurchase for myself these are their plump line lip liners so on one side you have a lip liner and I don't know if you can tell by this pencil but it's such a thick pencil and even when you sharpen it it's just it's so wide and when for me for a lip liner I want something like really sharp so when I'm lining my lips I'm really lining my lips and not just getting lip liner everywhere I feel like every time I've used these and I've tried out a handful of different shades trying to get a feel for these every time I use them I just feel like I'm not getting a defined lip because the lip liner is just kind of going everywhere and then on the other side you have kind of like this brush like kind of this flat brush and I don't know I guess that's for like if you want to like blend in your lip liner or whatever but I've like I've, I've never done that when it comes to my lip liners if I'm wanting to blend my liner and my um, lipstick or lip gloss like I'll just use my fingers and do it and it's fine but I don't know I was just I, I just don't really enjoy these a ton again I just don't reach for them very often and while I was grateful to be able to try them out and test them out especially now that I'm getting more into lip liners uh, I kind of went back into some of these ones from Buxom like ooh, maybe I'll really like it now and I was like you know what no I just don't like the product so 
This is one for me from Buxom. Like if I were happened to go through an entire one, I wouldn't repurchase on my own. Next up, I actually have a skincare brand. So this is the brand of Fourth Ray Beauty. So Fourth Ray Beauty is um, kind of like a sister brand of ColourPop. And I got sent a PR package and I was super excited about that. I really enjoy skincare and testing out skincare. And they sent along four little minis, which I thought was so perfect. And I tested them out really consistently. And I just didn't really love them. There were a few products that I was like, oh, that's okay. Like the AM to PM cleanser, like that was fine. I had a toner that I tried that like, I think severely like dried out my skin. Um, and that one didn't work for me very well, but because when I was trying them out, I, there was never anything that I was like, this is so great. I really enjoy this. Or, you know, if I use this up, I would have to go out and get another one. I just didn't feel that way about any of the products that I tried. And so fourth ray beauty is a bit of a newer skincare brand. They've come out with a few new items. Items. And every time they come out with a new one, I'm just kind of like, mm, because you know, like I tried a few of their products and it just like didn't really get me going. It did get me hyped. I enjoy that it's a little bit more on the affordable side, but I've just found so many great skincare products that I repurchase over and over from cleansers to moisturizers, exfoliators, masks, like eye creams. Like there's just ones that I repurchase and repurchase, especially from the same brands. I get very loyal to my skincare because uh, you know, like. You don't want to switch it up too much when it comes to your skincare routine. And unfortunately, Fourth Ray Beauty, I was so excited to try them out. And I was really hoping I would find products that I just absolutely loved. But not something I would go on to purchase with my own money. Alrighty, I just have two more products. This next one here is from MAC. This is their Studio Fix 24 Hour Smooth Wear Concealer. So I got sent over a couple of these concealers from MAC. I was really excited to try them out because I love trying out new concealers, don't get me wrong. Uh, so we just kind of have like the standard doe fit here for the applicator. There's a really wide variety of shades, which I think is great. I chose out a couple for myself to try. And this is one of those products that it's like, I think it's fine. I use it every once in a while. I think that it's nice but it's nothing that I'm like this is a great concealer this is a holy grail this is a favorite everybody must go try this it's like decent didn't do anything bad fairly easy to blend out uh, I would have like a little bit more coverage on it maybe but it also just doesn't make my under eyes look great look super smooth I don't know just anything like that. Like I, I just don't really notice a ton of benefits when it comes to the Smack one. Again, I can use it and I enjoy it and I think it's fine. But if I were to happen to go through an entire concealer or, you know, I would need like a different shade or something like that, I wouldn't go out and pick this one up from MAC. And then the last product that I have here is actually one from Ofra. Now, I'm a big fan of Ofra. I've recommended a lot of products from Ofra. I've bought a lot of products from Ofra myself, but they recently came out with this new Flexi Stick lip product. I was so intrigued by these because I really enjoy Ofra lip products. Their liquid lipsticks are some of my favorites. I repurchased some of my favorite shades in there. So when they came out with this, I was super curious about it. It was supposed to be kind of like a combination between a lip gloss and a liquid lipstick. So I was intrigued and I just don't think this formula is one for me. I think I either want a lip gloss or I want a liquid lipstick. Uh, so having this kind of like in between formula, I just don't think was for me because it does it glides on very well um, It feels nice on the lips It doesn't feel as drying as a liquid lipstick But it's just kind of one of those strange like hybrid lip products that you know, it doesn't fully dry down I do get a little bit of transfer with it and it just it doesn't look great on my lips either It kind of like fades a little bit not very gracefully It kind of does some weird things like in the center of my lips I do also feel like when I wear this it's a little bit more thicker and sometimes I have issues with it getting on my teeth Even after I've worn it for a while I'll like smile and then I have a lip product on my teeth So I don't know I wish I I just don't think this hybrid formula again is one for me I, I either want my lip gloss or I either want my liquid lipstick I, I, I want one or the other um, this kind of like mixture of the two formulas just doesn't really work for me I don't absolutely hate the product it's not like a 100% fail for me but I also like I wouldn't go out and purchase it myself of course since I'm mentioning it in this video I wouldn't go out and like repurchase another shade of it uh, or anything like that because it's just not a favorite will it do in a pinch Yes, um, the way that I found that I liked using this was because this is such a light shade. There's been times where I've used, if I have like a darker lipstick on, I'll pat just a little bit in the center of my lips and really kind of blend it out again with just my fingers. And I use it as kind of like that pouty lip thing. Like that works fine for me, but as for like the actual lipstick, just really wasn't a favorite of mine. Again, I wouldn't go out and like purchase another shade of it or anything like that. 
uh, but that one is the flexi stick from Ofra. I was just surprised because I love their liquid lipstick so much, so I was really excited to try that out, but just not really a product for me. Uh, but then other than that, that is going to wrap it up for today's video, chatting about a few products that I've received in PR that I would not purchase with my own money. Again, please make sure to check out Hannah's video. I'm really excited to watch her video and her choices. Let me know what you thought about mine in the description box. I would love to know, but other than that, if you guys enjoyed today's video, I hope that you'll give it a thumbs up. I hope that you also consider subscribing before you go, and I will see you in tomorrow's video.